Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be an adventure, drama, sci-fi, and action movie from 2020 called Boss Level. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. Roy Pulver used to be a Delta Force soldier and now he's living the same day over and over again for the 139th time. He's caught in a weird cycle where he restarts the day every time he dies. He's been through it so many times that he knows everything that's going to happen. Every day starts with a guy breaking into his place at 7 a.m. trying to kill him and any woman with him. Then, a helicopter shows up and starts shooting gun in his apartment until it blows up. Roy has figured out how to dodge all of this. He jumps out the window and lands in a truck full of sand, something he missed doing 22 times before getting it right. After that, he steals a car to get away from two more killers in a minivan, whom he calls Pam and Asmeralda because he doesn't know their real names. Each time the day restarts, only small things change depending on what Roy does or forgets apart from the first attacker, the helicopter, and Pam and Asmeralda. There are other killers like Guan Yin, Kaboom, a short guy who plants a bomb on him, Smiley, who likes to stab him with a lance and drags him around. The German twins, and someone who looks just like Roy, so he calls him Roy Number Two. Roy thinks his ex-wife might have the answers to what's happening, but when he calls her office, her boss, Colonel Clive Venter, picks up and tells him she's died in an accident, which Roy doesn't believe. On days he makes it to Jake's diner. There, he has to quickly grab a seat at the bar before Dai Fing takes the last spot. Roy ends up drinking a lot and listening to Dave, the guy next to him, talk about security and conspiracy theories. At 12.47, the killers always find him and kill him in the diner, so he's never made it past that point. If he doesn't go to the diner, he gets killed even sooner. As he gets shot by all the assassins again, Roy remembers the day before all this started. He was visiting his ex-wife, Gemma Wells, at Die Now Laboratories, where she worked, because she left him a message saying her company was hiring. But she didn't seem interested in his resume or catching up after a long time apart. Instead, she started taking his measurements and even took a hair sample from Roy, which hurt him. While Ventor and his guard Brent were watching on the security cameras, Roy questioned Gemma about the strange device she was working on. She mentioned that it could undo all of time and space and could even blow up the earth if mishandled. Roy also talked about their son, who doesn't know Roy is his dad and thinks he's just a family friend. Their conversation was cut off by Brett, reminding Gemma that Roy shouldn't be there, but she brushed it off. When Roy tried to hand over his resume, Brett told him they weren't hiring. Showing Gemma had lied to Roy. Before he left, Gemma told Roy about a crucial birthday gift she'd sent him and mentioned the word Osiris. Ventor, unhappy that Roy knew too much about his work, told Brett to get rid of him. He also reprimanded Gemma for breaking rules by bringing Roy in. That night, Roy ended up at a bar of a woman named Alice. While Alice was away, Gemma called Roy, sounding desperate and saying she needed his help. But Ventor cut the call short before she could explain. Despite sensing Gemma was troubled, Roy went home with Alice. Meanwhile, Gemma used Roy's hair and blood in her machine, prompting Ventor to send Brett after her. Remembering his last conversation with Gemma, Roy realized he hadn't opened the birthday gift she mentioned. Instead, he found a book titled, I set an Osiris with a note from Gemma hinting at the importance of time. Caught up in the book, Roy forgot to dodge the killers and died a couple more times before managing to escape with the book. Instead of the usual routine, Roy ends up at the underground Atlanta Mall and starts reading the book Gemma gave him. He's puzzled by the story of Iset and Osiris and how it relates to his situation. While reading, he notices his son Joe making a purchase from another kid. Realizing Joe is his only family left after Gemma's death, he follows him into an arcade hosting esports competitions. 
Roy unknowingly causes the screens to malfunction as he walks by, but he's too focused on confronting Joe about skipping school and checking what Joe brought, relieved to find they're just cards and not something illegal. Roy then takes Joe out for lunch, and as they leave, he notes the time is 12.50, the longest he survived in the loop. As they exit, the assassins show up and shoot at them. Roy shields Joe of his body, confessing he's his father before dying. When the loop restarts, Roy tries to find out about the tracker from the intruder, but gets no answer. He then rushes to the diner's bathroom to search his body thoroughly, but finds nothing. Remembering Dave's expertise, he asked him about hiding a tracker, leading to the revelation that it might be in his teeth. This triggers a memory of Alice, the dental hygienist, and part of the trap. Armed with alcohol and pliers from Jake, Roy and Dave head to the bathroom where Roy starts pulling out his teeth until he finds the tracker but is then killed by Roy number two. In the next loop, Roy confronts Alice who admits Brett paid her to plant the tracker. Roy goes through the usual motions until he reaches Jake's diner where he removes the track tooth and sets a trap with it in an unbanned building. Pam falls for it, but doesn't reveal her employer before Roy kills her. Roy threatens Brett and Venter over a stolen phone and attempts to breach the laboratories of a car, only to fail and get shot by Brett. During one of Ventor's long talks, Roy finds out the project's name is Osiris Spendel. He figures out two key things. Ventor is clueless that the project is actually operational, and Gemma intentionally involved Roy, aiming for him to become Osiris. Buoyed by the realization that Gemma had faith in him, Roy embarks on a fresh set of loots with a renewed strategy. After his usual routine in dishing the tracker, he seeks out Dave Fing for sword training. Intrigued by Roy, she agrees to teach him. Several loops later, having honed his skills enough to outmatch her, he expresses his gratitude and infiltrates Dai now once more. This time, Roy opts for a sword duel with Guan Yin and defeats her. When Brett and Ventor show up, Roy quickly dispatches Brett and engages in a physical altercation with Ventor. As Ventor reaches for a gun, Roy pins his hand down. After eliminating Ventor, Roy dashes to the mall, only to find he's too late. Joey has already been harmed. As Roy is held back by the police from approaching Joe, the world begins to end, fulfilling Gemma's prophecy. Roy blames himself for Gemma's death and Joe's involvement. For several loops, he does nothing, letting the assassins end his life repeatedly. Eventually, the cycle of violence jolts him into action and he starts spending his days with Joe at the mall. On the 249th loop, a conversation about Gemma's work leads Joe to mention a recent call from her, contradicting Roy's belief that she had died earlier. This revelation spurs Roy to action. He revisits the labs, confronts Ventor and Brett, and learns from Brett's confession that Gemma had tampered with the Osiris spindle, triggering an uncontrollable chain reaction. Ventor's realization that Roy's ability to infiltrate the facility is due to the spindle's activation suggests Gemma's plan for Roy to be a critical component in the project's dynamics. Roy spots the exact moment of Gemma's demise on the security footage. It's 14 minutes after he wakes up. Deciding to save her within this tight time frame, he quickly deals with the first assailant, then diverges from his usual path by leaping straight into the helicopter. He ejects the gunman and coerces the pilot to rush him to die now. Arriving there, he arms himself with a dropped machine gun and eliminates all the hitmen congregated outside Gemma's lab entrance. Without a second thought, Roy dispatches Brett and Ventor and reunites with Gemma. When she inquires about the number of attempts it took him to reach her, he downplays the effort, claiming it was a single try. Gemma clarifies that the spindle can't be stopped, only reset. She designed the machine's missing component to resonate with Roy's DNA, meaning his entry into the spindle could potentially reset time to normalcy. If time were to continue and Roy perishes within the spindle, it would be permanent. Yet, Roy feels prepared enough to safeguard both Gemma and Joe with relative ease. After a farewell kiss to Gemma, he steps into the Osiris spindle, hoping his action would finally normalize the day. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe.
Take care and see you next time.